All right, hey everybody. Today we're going to shade a cylinder, draw one, and then shade. You're going to need a pencils and um, paper sketchbook. It could be a number two pencil or it could be your fancy pencils that you already have. Um, and if you need to sharpen those, you also need a tortilla. Or if you don't have one of those, you can also um, get a tissue or something like that. It will work just as good. So the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to shade a, um, to shade the cylinder, we need to draw one out. So you're going to need a ruler or you can use a piece of paper to draw it straight if you'd like. We're also going to need something that's going to draw a curve, like a lid of a container or something like that. Then I'll show you how to use that. All right, so I'm going to make a series of two parallel lines, about four inches, something like that. Um, in the middle of my piece of paper and you don't need to do this with heavy pressure but mine might be a little bit darker than what yours might be and then after that I'm going to grab something as a circle template so you can use a lid of a container you can use a bowl something like that and I am going to make um, some curves going from the ends of these parallel lines and then I'm going to use that same curve and do one at the top of the parallel lines. And then one more time, I'm going to go underneath where I just did using the bottom of that curve, the very top of my cylinder. Now before I start shaving, the last thing that I'm going to do is grab my ruler and I'm going to make a horizontal line. This horizontal line is going to represent the table or what the cylinder is going to be sitting on. Once I finish that, then I'm done with my ruler and any other tracing device and I want to make some visual representation of where my light is going to be. So I'm going to propose that my light is going to be on the right side of my cylinder, which means on the right side everything should be light. So we know that the opposite, we would normally have a shadow, but on that side the cylinder is going to be dark. All right. You could use the 4B pencil, the 2B pencil if you have that set, or you could re use a regular number 2 pencil, that tortillan, or that tissue. I'm drawing a light line right now to show me visually where I'm going to stop my shading. So that's going right down the center. And then with firm pressure, this is the technique that we're going to use. We're going to make a series of small little ovals and I am um, drawing very darkly. So hard pressure going up that side that's the darkest side. This should be the darkest spot on your cylinder. And again, these overlapping little ovals will allow me not to see any of the pencil lines. You might see a little texture when you get and you um, lighten up on your pressure, but in general where this dark area is, we should see no lines. We're overlapping all of these little small ovals as I move over. Now what you want to start doing as you start progressing and moving toward the right is you want to gradually, very gradually lighten up your pressure. Now by this point, your hand may hurt just a little bit because you've done a lot of shading and you're using a lot of muscle when you're um, pressing down this hard. Stick with it and then just start to lighten up. I'm going to speed up my video so you don't have to watch me too much, but you can pause yours and you can keep going till you get over to that lightest spot. But again, I'm going to lighten up my pressure. All right, so let's slow it back down. I know it's going to be worth it. Um, we are just really, really light. See, I'm still making those circles, but I've lightened up my pressure a lot. 
I am almost to that point at the middle where we drew that line. So let's stop and let's rethink back to what we've learned so far. So, so far, we have been looking at our light source and discovering where the lightest part of our object is. We've practiced pressure control, so that's really, really dark on one side, heavy pressure, and lightening up to the middle to our, um, that center point. And then shading with small overlapping ovals. That way we don't see any of those lines. And I know it takes a long time to do that, but that shading, when we're doing it really lightly, will really help as we go over so that things, we don't see those marks on there. Now next, what we're going to discuss is how we're going to blend these things. So this is when you're going to need to get out um, those tortillas. If you have them, it came with your set, or just a tissue. All right. So either one of these will work. I'm going to demonstrate both, but then I'll probably move to the tissue, which I know both, most people will have when they're at home. So the first thing you want to do with that um, tortilla is that you want to make those small ovals again, and we want to concentrate all on the dark area. Now I'm just going to be doing the top section so you can compare and contrast, but again, we're working our way over to the lightest part. So you're going to smooth out so you don't see any of those bumps or any of those marks anymore from any of those lines that might have shown when you were doing that pressure control and you'll gradually move over. Again, I'm only doing one section of this. You would do the whole thing if you had one of those um, tortillas. Now when you get over to the center portion, you're going to keep continuing on over so we're going to smooth out so we shouldn't see any sharp contrast between that center point and over and notice I'm going back over some of my lines if you see some of those. Now I'm going to take my tissue, this is any just tissue that you have, and then you're going to do the exact same thing. So you're going to stay on the darkest portion and again I'm just doing one section so you can see and then I'm going to gradually move over. I think it makes a really really smooth transition but you want to be careful that it doesn't blotch up on you. So again, I was only doing one section at a time, and I'm going to try to smooth that out with what I've already done, since I'm going to continue on with my tissue, since most of you have that. Now, some artists don't prefer to do this. They don't mind those little bitty um, textured lines the tooth of the paper brings out. But if we're going to try just to create some of that smooth texture going from our darkest part all the way over to our lightest portion where the light would be hitting because our goal is is to simulate something that would be happening in nature that we would see um, the light source hitting an object to make it look more three-dimensional. Now I'm going back over some of these lines so that I can see some of those little white spots so I'm going back over that with my pencil just a little bit so I can see that smooth transition if you see any of those. And again, I don't want to bring that tissue over to the white portion, but if you have and you've lost that white just dot with the um, eraser over there on the, um, the far right where the light source is. Now on the inside of our cylinder, I am going to be shading everything with just kind of a even pressure just so that I have a really medium tone and after I go through, I'm going to smooth that out. All right, now I'm going to slow it back down and we're going to get our ruler back out. We're going to make some lines. It's going to be our cast shadow. So again, that light source is coming over, it's hitting our object, so our cast shadow is going to follow that angle that the light source would hit our object and it would bounce off to that tabletop surface since we've already drawn that line for the tabletop. So I'll make a cute few lines with that with my ruler, and then we'll do the exact same thing that I did on my cylinder. I'm going to make those small pressure, heavy pressure ovals near this, um, where the cylinder hits the table. I'm going to make those at the closest point, and that's going to be my darkest point. 
and then I'm going to quickly, I'm going to transition my pressure as I move down lighter and lighter. Then I'm going to follow the exact same procedure where I'm going to either take the rutilion if you have one, or if you want to take a tissue, and that tissue will wipe from dark. Keep it on the dark until you slowly, gradually blend all the way to the light. All right, I'm going to slow it back to the last time to talk about how we're going to finish this up. We're going to take the eraser. We're going to clean up any of those edges, especially since I'm using a tissue. I'm going to use that to clean up um, any of that spillover that might have happened the shading. I'm going to take off my obvious lines on the far right and clean up any of those other stray lines that I have. That will be your finished piece.